Well, it goes back. I became a Christian back in 1986, and being a guy who's been involved in basketball most of my life, it seemed natural to partner and become supportive of a ministry that uses sports to introduce people to a personal relationship with Christ. So it was just kind of an easy fit for me being involved in basketball as a player and now as a commentator and then being able to partner with a ministry like FCA that uses the platform and the vehicle of sports to not only help players become better in their respective sports, but more importantly, it points them to the uncreated creator and to a personal relationship with Christ. And anytime you can join a relationship with Christ in sports, uh, I think that's a win-win, and it certainly fits um, what's, what I'm passionate about and what I've been involved in for, for all of my life. And what's the message that you want to get across to these young Christian athletes? Well, really, that you're always rep you're an ambassador for Christ no matter where you are and what you're doing. Sports is a tremendous platform, particularly in our culture, but even worldwide. But sports is so highly esteemed, and it always has been. And when you carry not only the banner of your school and your sport, but also the banner of Christ, which is the preeminent banner that any of us can carry, then you have a greater call and responsibility and purpose to your playing. What's the best piece of advice your mom and dad ever gave you? Uh, my mom and dad both lost my mom in 94. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, my dad likes to say you have to bend with the breeze or you'll break. In other words, you've got to have flexibility in how you adjust to, to life circumstances. Uh, my mom and dad always talked about treating people the way you wanted to be treated and uh, being conscious of how you're treating other people. Uh, those were the things that probably, in terms of just kind of a short snippet, that, that have stayed with me. Um, and then the other thing is always that you have control over your attitude. Uh, that's something we all have control over. There are things that can happen to us, circumstances that might not go our way, adversity that might come upon us, but it's, in, it's on us as to how we respond and what kind of attitude we'll, we'll, we'll bring to whatever we're doing or to whatever we might encounter. I've got a question. Um, what is your takeaway, so kind of switching over to sports gear here, from this year's NCAA tournament, what, what's, what's your takeaway? And, and, and i got to ask, did you think the best team won? Um, you know, I thought there were a couple of teams that may have been better on paper. I thought Wichita State looked like a championship team. I thought Michigan State did. But the way the tournament unfolds year after year is that on occasion we'll have the best team end up winning it. But more times than not, it's the team that's playing the best at that particular time. And you have to earn that championship through six games. So my takeaway was Connecticut um, continued to raise its level of play against terrific op opposition and found a way um, to make it happen. And um, their story is a great one because they weren't in the tournament last year due to um, academic progress rates um, not being up to NCAA standards. And they fought, stayed together, grew, got better, and beat some terrific teams on their way to the championship. And um, that was their fourth championship in, since 1999. I mean, that is really, really high-level accomplishment for that basketball program. The women have been off the charts um, and got another championship in an undefeated season. I think that's their ninth NCAA championship and probably their fourth or fifth undefeated season, if I recall correctly. Um, but for me, the tournament takeaway was that um, the, best, the team that was playing the best um, got it done. I know they totally busted my bracket. <laughs> <laughs> I busted a lot of people's brackets. Yeah, true. Um, here, I, I know they didn't have the greatest season. I know a lot of IU fans have been upset with Tom Green. What's what's your opinion, opinion right now? What going on? You know what? Year? It goes in cycles when you talk about being successful, and when you think about where the IU program was prior to Tom Green getting there, and where they've been able to get to. I just think it's a matter of a blip on the radar, and a bump in the road. Um, but when you use, lose talented players. Uh, it's hard to restock and reload, and it's difficult to win consistently with all young guys. Um, connect, um, Kentucky um, was kind of an exception this season, but it took them a while to get going. But I think the b basketball program's in good hands, really good hands with, with Coach Crean, and it's unfortunate that people tend to uh, be super anxious and impatient when it comes to having long-term success. That's not an easy thing to do, and um, I think he's built that program in the right way from a culture standpoint, and I think they'll be fine. They just had a tough year last year.
This is a really quick follow-up. I know um, it's it's been well documented around here. Indiana did not have any teams in yeah, the NCAA yeah, tournament. Right. You think that's that's a trend? No, no, it's no, it's trend. no, no, it's just a blip. It happens. I mean, history repeats itself until it doesn't. That's a rarity, and I think going forward it'll be a rarity. Uh, there are too many good coaches and good players and good programs across the state. This was just one of those um, kind of weird, funky coincidences. Last question. Um, this is another thing that's kind of been going around. Um, do you think, personally, do you think college athletes should be paid or, or not? No, I don't think you can pay them, but I do believe in making sure the scholarship covers the cost of attendance. Um, that's something that I think needs to be done, and I think there's movement to make that happen. Um, the cost of being in school is beyond room, books, and tuition, and that's a tremendous benefit for the student-athletes, but they typically aren't allowed to work. More and more sports are all now year-round, and the expectation is that you're on campus either in summer school or working on your game, whatever it is, whether it's a revenue-generating sport or not. And so the demands placed on student-athletes are significant for the education they get, and that, that scholarship should cover every single aspect of the cost of being on, on being in, being a student athlete, and then the other piece is for those in the revenue generating sports, they should have an opportunity in some form or fashion to participate in the revenue generated from their likenesses and images being sold as part of the university's uh, marketing uh, budget. So I think that's something that can be adjusted too. Whether you don't give it to them now, maybe you tie it to graduation or being on course to graduate, but uh, the likenesses and images of players. Uh, generate revenue for the university and some of that revenue should go back to those kids anything else you want to add about tonight about no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> okay. i'm good, I'm good.